I have been using the Logitech MX Mechanical Mini for Mac for about a month or so. And honestly, I think this is a great keyboard. If you are on Mac and you're looking for an in-between keyboard between the scissor switch or the normal really low profile switch to a normal mechanical keyboard that you would see more on the ones that are custom or all of those higher profile ones, especially if you're not used to something that's a little bit higher. This is a great keyboard because it is very much Mac compatible. There is some competition in the space, but this keyboard is through and through Mac compatible in terms of it has software that works well. It has a key caps or key legends that work well for Mac. And it also is directed at the Mac aesthetic. So as you guys can see, it is a very light white here. This version goes very well along with all of the silver Macs. Cause you'll see here when I talk about the design, this silver or the gray is actually more of the silver like you would see on a MacBook rather than being a space gray. Now as for the build of the keyboard, this keyboard is made of plastic. For $150, sometimes I feel like that's a little bit expensive for a case that's made of plastic. But at the same time, this is Bluetooth, so it is going to be wireless. And usually when the case is actually made of metal, that interferes with all of the Bluetooth signals with all of the wireless compatibility. So having it plastic honestly works really well for this keyboard to be Bluetooth. Like I mentioned though, this does match the silver aesthetic of a MacBook and that is due to the top aluminum plate. So the top case here, as you'll see here under the keys, it does have a silver top plate, which makes it look a little bit more premium, a little bit more, I guess, high or higher quality. So that's honestly really helpful for this keyboard. It also adds a little bit of weight, which is needed, especially when the rest of the case and all of the keycaps are plastic. Usually something that's all through and through made of plastic feels really cheap, just like I saw from my Kinobo IF98 that I just reviewed a week ago. That keyboard was fully made of plastic and it made the keyboard overall feel a little bit cheaper than something that's fully made of metal, such as a Keychron Q series keyboard. The keycaps on this keyboard are made of plastic, just like with any other keyboard. The ones that we have here are shine through ABS keycaps mean that you can see the key legends a lot better, which is something that's really great, especially on keyboards like this with the MX keys and the other MX mechanical that's Mac and Windows compatible. The lighting effect that all of these keyboards have that Logitech has implemented into these is honestly really great. It has a proximity sensor so that whenever you get close to it, the keys light up, they know you're about to type and they only light up if it senses that you are in a dark environment. So whenever you're in daylight or you're in the office, really much, pretty much in a, in a brighter environment, they won't light up, which helps conserve battery life, giving this one of the best battery lives I have seen. Just like with the MX keys, I get around four weeks of battery life just because usually my office is pretty bright here in my home office. So the, the backlight usually never turns on. You can also remove the keycaps on this keyboard, but I honestly find that pretty pointless because the PCB actually isn't hot swap, meaning you cannot change the switches. So really the only reason you would be removing the keycaps is either to replace it with another one, which as far as I know, Logitech doesn't sell any replacements. And then if you wanna just check out what the switches look like, but other than that, removing the keycaps really isn't very helpful at all. One thing I do want to mention about the build of the keyboard though, is that if you did see my Logitech MX Mechanical Mini, the other one that was for dual Mac and Windows, the keys were really rattly. They felt like they didn't really sit in place right. While well, this keyboard actually did a lot better. So now this keyboard doesn't rattle. The keycaps don't move around too much. So even though they are plastic, when you shake the keyboard, the keycaps don't move around in their switches, meaning that even when you're just resting your fingertips on top of these keys, they won't rattle and they won't make that like clacky noise without you even pressing the key. Now, I don't know if that's because this is a Mac variant or because it's just a later iteration of keyboards, whereas the other one was one of the first ones produced. This one has been out now for a couple of months, so this one just feels better. And again, that's just because this is that mechanical mini for Mac is what they call it. And as far as I know, there's really not many differences other than the keycap design here. Now, speaking of these keyboards not really being much different, they both are compatible with the Logitech Options Plus software, which honestly is one of the better softwares out there. I've seen other softwares from like the Nufi console. I've seen other softwares from like the Kinobo. A lot of those aren't really compatible with Mac, but even just seeing their buggy, a lot of them are beta versions 
one thing that Logitech really has going for them is those options plus software, just because you can program a lot of the function row keys, as well as you pair it with the MX Master 3 mouse or the Anywhere 3 mouse, and you can program some of those buttons as well. The software is also free, which is a big plus. And like I said, you can program the function keys and it's a little more intuitive for someone that's a beginner. I've been using the VIA software to program my Keychron Q keyboards whenever I wanna set a macro on them. But for this one, to set a macro, you don't have to know exactly what key command it is. You can literally press the combination of keys and it will register that as a macro to any of the function rows. You can also program the buttons on the side here, which will give you more access to quick shortcuts or any macros. And unlike a keyboard that's compatible with the VIA software, something that Options Plus does better is that all of the macros can actually be set per software or per app on your Mac, which is really helpful for me because I use all of the macros for Final Cut Pro and then I also use them for Affinity Photo whenever I'm editing, but I don't use those same macros whenever I'm, say, writing one of these scripts that here for YouTube or whenever I'm just typing something out. So being able to have that profile saved to a specific app is actually really helpful rather than always having that macro and in a sense really losing that key or losing that key of having any function on the other keyboards such as the key crown ones. You can also adjust the backlight settings in the Logitech Options Plus menu. Now it does come only with white LED backlights, so it doesn't have RGB, but you can mess with some of the effects it can do. It can do the normal breathing, it can always stay on. I personally kept it as a stock always stay on just because whenever the backlight does come on is usually when I'm in a dark room and being always able to see what I'm going to be typing up is really helpful. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, this is honestly a great keyboard if you are on Mac and you're looking for a keyboard that's going to be helping you get more productive. You have macros that you can go ahead and program. You can also mess with the backlight effect if you want to. This honestly is a great, it's almost like a first party keyboard for the Mac because you get all of the shortcuts, you get all of the function rows, and then again, you get that extra ability to put macros on this keyboard, which a lot of other keyboards don't have. One thing I will mention about the keyboard though is that the key feelings or the switches are actually really mushy. And I don't know if this has to do with it being low profile, but it's supposed to be a tactile bump whenever you're typing on it. And I've used the Glorious Pandas, the Sapphire V2s, as well as the Gator on Baby Kangaroo switches. And honestly, this just doesn't compare to it. Again, I don't know if that's because it's low profile, but these feel a lot more mushy whenever I'm typing on it compared to my normal keyboards. But other than the feeling, this keyboard is honestly a great option for anyone that's looking, again, to get into mechanical keyboards, but really wants a half step between the normal low profile keyboards and a normal high profile keyboard because sometimes it does take a lot to get adjusting to the new ones. So this is a really great half step and again, luckily they did make the Mac variant for it. So it works a lot better. I will say though that the Mac variant of any of the Logitech products, especially the new ones, they don't come with the USB receiver, which is a Logi Bolt one for these new ones. So if you are thinking of using that wireless, I do recommend getting the receiver. It's going to cost an extra $15, but it guarantees a better connection than just simply having it on Bluetooth. If for some reason you really hate Logitech and you don't wanna go with the MX Mechanical Mini for Mac, there are other options out there. Two of the ones that I'm seeing are the Nufi Air 75 or Air 60 if you want a smaller one. And then Keychron has their S1 and then their K3 series, which are all low profile mechanical keyboards that are compatible for Mac. One thing I will say though, is that the Nufi Air 75, just as I saw with the Halo keyboard, does not have any compatibility with the Nufi console software. That software is only available for Windows, and even then it is still a beta software, so it can be a little bit buggy. The aesthetic is also really different than you would see on a normal keyboard. It does take a colorful orange, so if you're looking for something more neutral like a black or a white or gray, they don't have that in any of their options. The other alternatives come from Keychron, and that's the S1, which is one of their newer keyboards. It is QMK and VIA compatible, so if you're someone that's looking to use macros on your keyboard, this is going to work really well. But then it's also wired only, meaning that you can't use it on Bluetooth, you can't use it with an audio receiver. So if you're thinking of taking your keyboard everywhere with you, whether you go to a coffee shop or you travel to work and back with a mechanical keyboard, 
I wouldn't recommend it just because it's another wire that you have to carry, another wire that you have to take care of, and then also you have to cable manage it at your desk if you're someone that's looking to have an organized desk setup. The third option is the only one that I really think comes close to the MX Mechanical Mini, and that is the K3 Pro from Keychron. It's a plastic build because it does come with Bluetooth, so you can use that wirelessly. It is low profile, and it's also QMK VIA software compatible, so you can set macros on that keyboard. Again, using the VIA software, you can't set it specifically for different apps, so you will just have to preset it on the keyboard completely on any app and wherever you are working on. But it also does have the option of being wired if you want zero latency and you don't really trust Bluetooth or you really have had bad experiences with Bluetooth, it does work wired so you can just plug it in straight to your MacBook and you can work straight from that. The K3 Pro does only come in one color option, which is a pale black compared to the MX Mechanical Mini that's available in this white silver version, or it is available also in its dark gray, space gray version, just like all of the other dual ones they have. But all of the color variations, that's completely up to you. And it's also a brand that's going to be shipping directly from I believe China, so it is international. You will have to pay a little more for shipping compared to this one that you can get straight off of Amazon right now. But let me know down below which of these options is the best one for you. Maybe you don't use macros or you don't really care about Bluetooth, so you're going to go with the wired one. Let me know down in the comments. Here is a typing test with the MX Mechanical Mini for Mac. It's the brown switches, completely stock, no adjustments because really you can't make any but here is a typing test if you're interested in how this sounds. Thank you guys for watching and I will catch you in the next one.